Brighton 3, Tottenham Hotspur 2. That was the full-time score today at the Amex as Tottenham Hotspur crumble like a chocolate digestive in a milky tea in that second half. Complete domination and control in the first, and it was Spursy in the second. It's a word I hate to use, but it was Spursy, and we bottled it and we threw it away. Complete and utter control in that first half. Started really well. The passing was crisp. Good movement. Good runs from every player on the pitch, as I say. And we get our deserved goal. We get our deserved goal. Brennan Johnson, six goals in six games. Fair play to the kid. I thought he was good today. And then Madison scores our second. Cruise control. Madison making good runs. Kudasevsky looking dangerous. Johnson scoring yet again. Solanke holding it up and playing well. And the second half, we just crumble. Early on in the second half, Yudoji makes a mistake. It's a terrible, terrible, uh, terrible mistake. Brighton put the ball in the back of the onion bag. And as soon as the pressure is applied on this team and on this football club, we fall apart. We completely fall apart. They get a second uh, not long after, as I say. And the third goal, I mean, who is marking Danny Welbeck? Who is marking Danny Welbeck? It's just so poor. It's so sloppy. And it was so predictable after we conceded that first goal. And it's so frustrating because after that Arsenal game, I didn't really have any hope with this project. And the Coventry game, although we won it, I thought it was horrendous. And I was very close to saying Ange out, but I thought, you know, maybe this, this win can give us some momentum. We can build on it. And we did. We did. Five wins in five we turned it into. Playing some really good football. I went to the game against Brentford. Thought we were fan uh, fantastic. Last weekend against Man United. I get that they're a terrible side at the minute. But we completely and utterly dominated and won comfortably. And you think, finally, starting to build some consistency. I'm starting to get back on board with the Ange train. And then that happens. That happens. Is a huge part of today down to the players? Yes, because those same players that produced in the first half, fell apart in the second half. But the manager can clearly see that they're falling apart and doesn't do anything about it until the 75th minute or something like that. Why are we not making changes when it's 2-2? Why do we have to wait until it's 3-2 there in complete control and we look like we're doing nothing with 15 minutes left? And why is Mikey Moore coming on with five minutes to go? It's a piss take. We rave on about how good this youngster is and so does that manager and we saw it on Thursday and you're starting Timo Werner over him, an attacking player whose worst attribute is his finishing. It was horrendous again today. Why start him in the first place? You start more but you see how bad Werner is. Although we were good in that first half, you sub him off at half time. He starts the second half poorly again, you sub him off in the 60th. But we waited until the 85th minute to bring Mikey Moore on. And midway through the 70 minutes has to say to... To take Werner off. It's so frustrating. It really is. Because again, very close to saying Ange out. Very close to losing all faith in this project after that Arsenal game. But we start to build something back. I finally think, yeah, we're getting consistency. Things are finally clicking. This is what we want to see. We're turning performances into results. And that first half, I thought, yeah, it's really working out as Spurs at the minute. Really working out, we're clinical, we're dangerous, we're defensively solid, the high line is playing the offside trap beautifully. Bit of pressure applied on this football club though in this team, like the previous team under the previous manager and the previous manager to that and the previous manager to that. It's a huge issue at this, uh, at this football club, it's a culture thing. Throwing it away when the pressure's put on you lads, it's Tottenham, the Fergie thing, you know. 2-0 up, comfortable, second half, completely and utterly fall apart completely fall apart and brilliant as well all of that momentum that we built over those five games whew, straight out the window two week international break now i'm going to be hearing all this from arsenal fans and chelsea fans gobbing off in my ear for the next few weeks why is it we always have these shit results before the international break as well and we've got like sit on them for two weeks honestly it's so frustrating it really really is look I think there were some good performances today in that first half. I don't really think anyone played well in that second half. Madison, excellent in the first half. Really poor in the second half. Weren't winning any 50-50s in the second half. Any aerial duels. That was a huge part of it. They wanted it more. It wasn't necessarily the skillful players that they had that scored them unbelievable goals and that they were scoring against the runner play and that's how we crumbled. No, 
we, after we conceded that first goal, we just didn't look like we wanted it, and they did. And it's not like, oh, their crowd's going mad, and they're getting their team up for it, and that's playing a huge part. This is one of the most quiet, you know, crowds I've, I've heard on telly. Maybe it was different in person, but, you know... A lot of the time, yeah, the TV might not do, you know, great atmospheres justice, but you definitely know when there's a bad atmosphere, and today it really sounded like one. So they just wanted it more. The team wanted it more. They were winning 50-50s, winning duels in that second half. We weren't, and Spurs crumbled. All the players who did well in the first half, Kulisevsky, Madison, Johnson, you know, Solanke, nowhere near it in the second half. Defensively, as I say... Fell apart in that second half. We could have conceded a couple in the first half. We also could have scored more than we did, though. Whereas in the second half, we didn't have any chances. And those last 10 minutes, you didn't feel like we were going to break them down. It was like that Arsenal game again and that Newcastle game where we're just trying and trying and trying and nothing's clicking and nothing's working. But we're having all the ball, but we're not creating anything, you know? I thought we were getting past that. I didn't think we were past it, but I thought we'd be getting past that. I thought my doubts about Andrew were starting to get proven wrong in certain players in that team. But, as I say, the way that we crumble today, it's not all on the manager, of course it's not, but it's part of it because of, you know, how long he waited to make his substitutions. Yes, yes it is. And you have to ask yourself about a bit of game management. 2-0 up, maybe first 10 minutes, drop that line back a little bit. You know, little things like that. But look, I'm, I'm not going to say Ange out or anything like that. I was close to after the Arsenal game, but we've been on a good run. We've built some consistency. It does feel like that's all gone out the window. But let's just see what happens again. Let's see what happens. I was very close to losing all faith in this manager. I've lost a lot of it, you know. Lost a lot of it at the end of last season and the beginning of this season. But I was very close to losing all faith in this manager. That faith was, uh, faith was regained a bit over the last few games. I start to lose faith a, uh, you know, a little bit again. So we'll see what happens when we come back from the international break. West Ham at home, that should be a win. We lose that. Serious questions have to be asked again, you know. But it just feels like whenever there's a bit of hope at this club that we can be moving in the right direction, that we're building some consistency and we're moving forward, it goes out the window with the performance like we saw in that second half today. Look, man of the match, it's hard to choose one because every player only really turned up for 45 minutes. Certain players didn't turn up for the whole 90, for example, Yudoji Poro, I thought was getting rinsed in that first half by Mitoma and got quite lucky. Romero, keep raving on about this guy being a world-class centre-back. He's great for Argentina, world-class, my bollocks. He is not a world-class centre-back. And all the, all the people saying as well, oh, you know, the high line, but we haven't conceded as many goals this season. That's gone out the window with three today. Three easy goals conceded, but just a terrible day for the football club. Questions have to be asked, not about the manager's job, but about tactical decisions and substitutions today. Questions have to be asked about this this football club and overall the mentality of the players, the ownership, everything. Because days like this keep happening year after year, season after season, every time we look like we've got a false dawn of hope. So frustrating. I want to be proven wrong by... by this football club, I want Ange to be successful, but you start to believe that he might be and then stuff like this comes along. You start to believe that this club might be moving in the right direction and we're turning a corner and this happens today. If that's Arsenal, Manchester City, away from home, 2-0 up, they win that game 4 or 5 nil, or they drop back a little bit and win it 2 nil. but they do not crumble and capitulate like we did. But guys... I'm going to make like a banana and split. Very frustrating day. Very bad day at the office. But hopefully we can turn it around against West Ham. It's just, yeah, a lot of questions to be asked. A lot of things to talk about. Hopefully you have a debrief out tomorrow, if not Tuesday. But yeah, a little bit lost for words at the minute. A little bit lost for words now. We've gone and bottled that. But yeah, guys, see you later. Have a smashing day. I'm going to make like a banana and split. And as always, Comedy Spurs.